So I just got a new bike. Well, it was new to me. And it was pretty new anyway. It's a little bit better than my old bike. So my old bike, it's a 2018 Roubaix Sport, and I love this thing. It is orange and yellow, really could be visible from the road. It's carbon frame, easy to handle, very comfortable. Disc brakes and the through axle with the handle on it. Nice high handlebar for comfort. Shimano 105 components. 11 speed in the back, 1132 gear ratio. The Future Shock, which only Specialized has, makes it a lot more comfortable to sit and ride for miles and miles miles and miles. Now the cost of this bike, $2,200. So what did I get in place of this? A 2020 Roubaix Comp. Like I said, a little bit better. And the differences other than the color, which this is all black, are a little bit better components. This is Shimano Altegra. The seat tube is a little bit more aerodynamic, but the one main difference is DI2 electronic shifting, which makes it way smoother to shift. You just tap on the lever, it shifts it for you really easy. Here's where you have to plug it in. And it might be a tad lighter, maybe a couple of ounces but it definitely is a little bit faster. When I took it on its maiden voyage a couple of weeks ago, I took it on a route that I know really well, and when I got home, it wasn't really winded or anything, I'd gone about a mile per hour faster than usual. And the cost of this bike, $3,000. Well, actually that was $3,000 to me, brand new, if I had bought it eight months before, like the guy who bought it and sold it to me, $4,600. When I got into the biking industry a few years ago and I got that 2018 Roubaix brand new right off the shelf, thankfully I wasn't too shocked at the price because I had been around bikes for quite a while, so I knew kind of what I was getting into. But for a lot of people, spending $2,200 a bike, that's insane. Let alone spending $3,000 for a bike, or if you bought that brand new $4,600, almost $5,000 for a bike. Let me tell you something. If you have to buy something that is so expensive, you should think about putting insurance on it, that should give you cause to pause. And if we're talking about the cost of those two bikes, what do you think the cost of that tri-bike was over there? Yeah, this bike right here. And it's not even connected for riding right now. We're not even gonna get into the cost of that bike there. Let's just stay focused on the two road bikes at hand. So the question is, with the cost of these bikes, is it too expensive? Absolutely not. Well, at least not for me or for anybody in the biking community, but to a lot of people, that's a lot of money that they could spend elsewhere. So then the natural question is, why are these bikes so expensive? That's a great question, I'm glad you asked. Today we are gonna look at the expenses that go into making these road bikes and high-end priced bicycles. So first off, let's talk about value. Now we all know that the value of something is only as valuable as what somebody's willing to pay for. So the first reason is market economics. In other words, some people are willing to pay that price. Not everyone, actually not the majority of people will, but avid cyclists will. The second reason, and this is a big one, is research and development, or research and design, R&D, whatever you want to call it. Scientists, engineers, they are trying to figure out the best, which usually means fastest, design. That means using wind tunnels, which are not cheap. 3D designs and CFD testing, that's really not cheap and making iterations of prototype after prototype after prototype, which you might have guessed is not cheap. Additionally, competing bike manufacturers don't really like to share their data with each other, so everybody kind of has to reinvent the wheel, so to speak. The third reason is cost of materials. Most of these expensive bikes are made from carbon, and carbon, as you guessed, is not cheap. Additionally, there are different kinds of carbon frames out there. Obviously, higher quality carbon frames are a bit more expensive. The fourth reason is manufacturing, which kind of falls under the cost of materials, but the process in which they use to build these carbon frames can be substantially different. When manufacturing those carbon frames, or even aluminum frames for that matter, 
This requires precision, which means that the tolerances must be low, and for aluminum frames, those welds have gotta be really precise. All right, the fifth reason, which we don't think about a lot, is quality control. And this is mostly a difference between quality brands and cheaper brands. Someone, usually an engineer, has to visit these facilities and spot check the frames, making sure that they're within the created specification. That means having the right dimensions, the correct strength, even the correct elasticity. Okay, the sixth reason, which is also a big one, is customization. That means different sizes and types. Regarding size, when they want to make a different sized frames, they have to change the tooling in manufacturing, which, as you guessed, is kind of expensive. But think about this, it's not just like one part of the frame that they change, it's generally multiple parts of the frames that they have to change to the size. And that's just the frame, let alone the fork, the stem, the seat, the pedals, the crank, and the gearing system. Now generally they're not making those other things, they're sourcing it from other companies, but if they're buying it from other companies and not creating it themselves, that can also get expensive, especially if they have to buy different components for each particular bike. And finally, the seventh reason is overhead. That's the cost of everything else to ensure there's a company to even make the bikes, which is a building for the employees. And if your company gets big enough, those employees are gonna consist of accountants, engineers, scientists, customer service people, even HR people, managers. Then they have to make customers aware that these bikes exist, which is marketing. And marketing can be very, very expensive. But hopefully they've made a bike so great that it just sells itself. Wow. And finally, the cost of getting the bikes to the customers, which is shipping. Uh... I guess that's an incentive to make the bikes as light as possible, right? So shipping costs are low. So there you go, a little look into why these high-end bikes are so expensive. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. And let me know what kind of bike you have and if you think it was worth the price. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, and I hope you all get up and try.